Hey guys, if you listen to this podcast, you or someone you know has probably been a victim of spiritual abuse. In addition to educating us all about these harmful groups, Coltish is proud to partner with Be Emboldened, a nonprofit dedicated to finding freedom from spiritual abuse. The founder, Naomi Wright, has been a guest on our show more than once. She shared her own personal story with us, which is something we really appreciate about Be Emboldened. They have the education and the training, but they also just get it on a personal level. It makes the special opportunity they have for cultish listeners today that much better. Be Emboldened provides excellent resources and practical help from trained professionals to walk alongside survivors, their loved ones, and church leaders and professionals seeking to serve this very real and growing need more effectively. They know that the cost of professional mentoring, expert consulting, and top-notch digital courses can be tough, though they're excited to announce a new way for everyone to access help, hope, and healing. With Be Emboldened's brand new Plus membership, you'll gain access to the exclusive content, expert mentoring, thought-provoking blogs, curated content, discounts, and more. Check out their new BE Plus membership at beembolden.com forward slash membership and use the code COLTISH50 at checkout for 50% off your first month subscription. That's COLTISH50 for 50% off. Here's to living out freedom. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed, few people cried, most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds I suppose we all thought that one way or another all right welcome back ladies and gentlemen to cultish uh, this episode is gonna be somewhat of a uh, glossary index uh, that will be a study guide and a help um, to add to this series uh, we are back with uh, Sandeep you've come from New Jersey uh, appreciate you uh, coming on uh, for this uh, little glossary index uh, summary so people can kind of have this as a point of reference good to have you back man yeah yeah good Thank as you. always I'm back with Andrew what's up man I'm excited for this as well this uh, this is gonna be very helpful for all of our our listeners to reference back to, uh, especially in terms of being able to think with a biblical worldview and witness and preach the gospel to a Hindu that they may know or Hare Krishna that they may know or someone even in the new age. I think it's helpful altogether. Yes. And so what you just heard there, it's just a prime example of kind of the influence on uh, the West uh, regarding uh, Hinduism. That was a uh, quote, actually an audio clip from uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer that was depicted by Killian Murphy in the recent film by Christopher Nolan, uh, Oppenheimer, about the person who created, the scientist who helped uh, develop, create the, the atomic bomb that ended World War II, at least with the war in Japan. Uh, I haven't seen the film, but what's been very interesting is that is one of the biggest grossing movies this past summer. And because of that, you know, people were just, you know, you look for information surrounding this historical character and people are finding this quote. And all of a sudden there's actually, com you can look at the comment section on YouTube. A lot of people are taking the sort of new interest in the Bhagavad Gita and the Hindu God. Ooh, the story of worlds. That sounds kind of cool. What's that all about? But it's always good to know sometimes even in Hollywood um, that things can get sensationalized. Things can be historically inaccurate. So you told me what's uh, what something's off about what he was saying in that clip. What was that? Uh, so when I first saw that clip, you know, I was like, uh, I first saw it, for, you know, especially the Hare Krishnas. They, they especially shared that a lot. And that clip and they take a huge pride okay he's quoting the Bhagavad Gita uh, when I saw that clip I, I was like okay wow open Imer. okay let, let, let me listen and he says that in the Bhagavad Gita uh, he sees Vishnu there's no Vishnu in Bhagavad Gita <laughs> <laughs> that's the most funniest part I stop I, I remember when I first watched that first time when I watched that clip I paused it, I was laughing. I was like, there's no Vishnu in the entire Bhagavad Gita. There is Krishna. Yes, again, all are same, obviously, the Hindus say. But but Krishna, Krishna is an entirely different person. Uh, he was not known as Vishnu. 
you know, in the Bhagavad Gita. There, there is no Vishnu name mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. It's, it's the <coughs> Krishna. Uh, and obviously Krishna says that I am Shiva, I am Kamdeva, I am everything. But Krishna is Krishna. So I think Oppenheimer got uh, wrong so in that place. Uh, yeah. Maybe he didn't read nicely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Or he was paraphrasing. One person cannot know everything. That, yeah. That's the point. You know. But they, t- they take pride in the uh, fact that, it, that it's mentioned? They, they take a lot of pride, like Muslims take pride that Muhammad was the last prophet. Yeah. Uh, again, we see Muhammad's life is like uh, someone you can't just mm. follow. So it's like Oppenheimer. He was maybe good in physics, uh, in building atomic uh, bombs, but he, uh, he shouldn't have done mm. that. I mean, if that's true, like, uh, obviously, I, I read like he was very fascinated about the Bhagavad Gita, actually, and about Hinduism. Yeah. But uh, uh, whoever he followed... He never read the scriptures. Bhagavad Gita yeah. doesn't. It, there, there's no Vishnu. <laughs> there is <laughs> well, Krishna. Yeah. Well, just just before we kind of jump into kind of our glossary terms of index defining terms, and we'll, we'll have time stamps and everything too when we drop the series. But it's even the fact that they take pride in this. When I look at this, is that I know the story is that he did have a lot of regret towards the end of his life about his creation of this because it was he was responsible for a weapon that killed millions and millions of people um and so he's the context he's viewing this in retrospect and he's kind of like i've i've kind of be, at least i interpret it as him saying i've become the destroyer of worlds but he's not necessarily saying uh, that i've invented like, death okay. he's, he's not he's not bragging about it he's like he's got this heaviness about him like i've the weight of millions of people are dead war is over but millions of people are dead because of me in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So it just, it's a fascinating clip. I appreciate that insight on it. So uh, that being said, let's, uh, let's, before we kind of jump in, one of the things that you want to say is just uh, like why this conversation is so important. You said, for example, some things going on as far as the, the advancement in New York, as far as uh, yeah. in the West regarding uh, Hinduism. Tell us about, um, you said some, there's like mandatory meditation classes, uh, some other examples? Yes, yeah, so, you know, I, uh, so I live now in New Jersey, you know, New York is just, you cross the Hudson River, uh, other side is New York, and the other side is New Jersey. Uh, so in New York, a uh, new uh, thing came out, a uh, new law, which is soon maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe within a few months or by the next year, meditation is becoming uh, the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, you know, uh, so he's making uh, uh, a meditation as compulsory uh, in the schools till the 12th grade. So, you know, all of these kids who were, will be going to the schools around New York City or in New York, you know, uh, I think New York City, is, they will be having a mandatory meditation class. And, and so the when I read that, I was like, wow, the, I mean, wish someone could do the same thing for Christians back in India, you know, uh, yeah. you know, uh, like some Jesus class, you know, like, uh, you know, equal freedom in the yeah. state like Uttar Pradesh, no anti-conversion law for Christians, you know, everyone has their own freedom and that's how it should be, you know. Uh, but all these kids who will grow up, I believe in next uh, 12 years, 15 years, they will... Uh, I mean, out of 10 people, for example, 10 of these kids, I mean, six, seven kids would have a soft corner for Hinduism, would be maybe halfway to Hinduism, mm. you know, and that's really sad, you know, because this this mayor doesn't know anything or uh, all these gurus, they don't know what meditation is all about, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that that would be one example of that. Uh, no, it, it's almost, man, it's almost like neutrality is a myth, like, well, you know, because any, anybody, anybody who does that, uh, you know, any anybody who, uh, hold on, someone texted me. Let me I'll just, I'll just. Uh, hey, can I ask a question about it real quick? Yeah, just, gonna... uh, go, go ahead. Uh, three, two, one, go. So, Cindy, with regards to the mandatory meditation class, uh, it appears it's two to five minutes of mindful breathing work each day from kindergarten to being a senior. And the way they pose it, it is if you look it up, it says giving NYC kids time to breathe. Uh, yeah. Why is that such a bad thing, Sandeep? Yeah. Uh, uh, so why that is like uh, when I read that first, I was like because uh, so uh, meditation doesn't exist without Hindu scriptures. Simple as that. You take the Hindu scriptures out, no one knows anything about <coughs> meditation. Straight. Uh, I mean, it doesn't exist with the Hinduism. Mm-hmm. So uh, again. When 
the teacher who will be teaching you know the first meditation class to these kids say of grade 5 you know uh, this kid doesn't know how to do meditation right maybe he's doing for the first time so the teacher would tell the kid all right you have to first sit in a padmasana position the lotus position uh, you know keep your hands uh, like you know like this uh, you know you you make all those certain pose at first and then the teacher would say the kid stop thinking about everything you know and nothing don't think about anything you know start thinking who you are what you did the entire day and it's, uh, it's so much connected to the hindu philosophy the vedanta philosophy and and, and when these teachers will teach meditation to these kids for sure they will they will teach real meditation you know like like um, how hindus do you know and that will open doors for for the demonic spirits actually mm. you know you're just opening the doors you know yeah. and not every kid will be trapped maybe and i hope not but f- many will fall you know and that's the future for the western world actually it's yeah. not just happening in new york city nyc uh, it's happening all around the europe europe is in more better bad condition actually uh, so that that's the future of the west you know meditation yeah. Uh, at the same time christians will uh, i see christians they're losing uh, losing their rights mm-hmm. in, in many cases you know same freedom there is no same freedom for christians back in india you mm-hmm. know yeah. yeah no it definitely makes sense you know as uh, the saying goes an open mind is like an open mouth that has to bite down on something and in this case you know it's empty mind and meditation it you have to match it with a spirituality to to em- to match the open-mindedness or the empty-mindedness. And that's where you see Hinduism play in. Um, so, yeah, let's just jump into uh, defining terms. So, uh, start at the very beginning. You know, we've made a huge emphasis on the Hindu scriptures. So, if anyone wants to know, um, you know, the things you're referring to. So, the high in the hierarchy of the Hindu scriptures, the number one is the, is the Vedas. The Vedas. And what is in the Vedas? In the Vedas, you have how you can do rituals. There are uh, different parts of Vedas again. Uh, the, the, among the Vedas, the most supreme one, the most superior one is the Rig Veda. Uh, Rig Veda, uh, like if anyone wants to study about uh, the caste system, uh, you know, you go straight to the Rig Veda, the oldest, you know, uh, scripture for Hindus, believed by all Hindus almost in India, uh, is the Rig Veda. You open the book 10, and you start studying uh, in the entire book 10, you get to see how caste system actually came in India from Vishnu's mouth, the Brahmins, and then from the feet, the Shudras, you know, came out. So, and then there are so many other scriptures about uh, the caste system, the Bhagavad uh, Gita, you know, in in uh, book 18. If you read the book 18, you'll, you'll get to see that no one leaves their duties. You have to follow the duties, you know. Uh, so you get to see caste system right over there, and then uh, there after the Vedas, I would say the the Bhagavad Gita obviously is a part of Mahabharata. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you get to see, you get to see caste system over there, and and also the reincarnation cycle. If anyone wants to uh, see that, really, are we not free of any reincarnation uh, cycle, um, or like. Um, does our rebirth, you know, uh, like if anyone is a Hindu, uh, the rebirth depends on your karma, past karma. And mm-hmm. that comes from the Chandogya Upanishad uh, in book five, actually. It talks about uh, how someone who is a Brahmin, it's actually because in his previous birth, he did something really good. So that's why he was born in a top caste. Someone who is a snake or a earthworm, you know. Mm-hmm. You see any earthworm? Uh Around here, you should believe that uh, maybe, uh, you know, it was a person who did something bad, so he he is now an earthworm. Chandogya Upanishad, uh, Book 5. These are Vedas, by the yeah. way. Uh, yeah. the, the earliest of all, the, the most important. Mm-hmm. Uh, beating a woman, Brihadaranaka Upanishad. Over there, you get to see if a woman is not submitting uh, uh, to the person who is uh, calling her, uh, you know, to uh, to sleep. Uh, even by giving gifts, the the person can the man can hit the woman actually, and forcefully take her in. So you get to see this in Upanishads, you know.
Hey, what's up, everybody? It's the Super Sleuth coming at you with the sponsor for this episode, which is Cornerstone Tea. You need to go to cornerstoneteacompany.com right now and get yourself some of the finest handcrafted fresh teas. It's insane, guys. Like, they have classic flavors like this chai right here, but this chai is cranked up to 11. It's high caffeine, and when you open this bad boy up, mmm, it just hits you with smells, man. You know, it's like, it's what I would think the Garden of Eden smells like. And guys, this is a Christian company. We should be supporting them. I know I've been drinking this tea while I've been sleuthing as well. The instructions to brew this tea are right here also on the front, which makes it super easy for you. And when they sent me this tea, guys, they also gave me some awesome stickers. Who doesn't like getting goodies? So enough about that. Let's talk about the company. The company is a business that seeks to keep God's kingdom at the center of operations through regular cost-specific tea blends to benefit missionaries and charities. That's right. Part of the proceeds goes to help the kingdom of God worldwide. Also, they have a comprehensive approach to nationwide wholesale wherein optional service training and innovative exclusive tea blending come alongside this excellent product. So don't stop with just listening to this ad. Go to cornerstoneteacompany.com and use the code in all caps right here, cultish. 10, no spaces either, to get 10% off your first order. Get yourself some tea and change the way that you've been living your morning routine. Talk to you later, guys. Yeah, and so in so in in uh, the Vedas, then, you're really seeing a lot of sort of the espousing, like, worldview, uh, theology, um, and, and ritual, specifically, and also talking about reincarnation, past lives. Like, a lot of that is sort of the core foundation as yes, far as, like, the Vedas the, goes. The, the, the whole idea of the self actually comes from the Vedanta, which are the parts of the uh, the Upanishads, uh, the Chandogya Upanishad, the Etreya uh, Upanishad. Um, all of these Upanishads, basically, especially the Chandogya Upanishad, uh, it talks about the entire Vedanta philosophy. Vivekananda, Hindu, the popular Hindu monk, he often quoted Chandogya Upanishad, the Vedanta. Yeah, he followed the Vedanta philosophy, which is Advaita, Dvaita. Dvaita is like you are that one mm. you know you're the self this comes from the vedas right and you would say most people who are westerners who are into these like type of practices and rituals which come from hinduism they probably have never read like they're just not familiar with the vedas uh, absolutely not i i i come from new jersey so i i live there and i see every day every single day i see people with uh, you know om tattoo you know some kind of hindu eastern uh style tattoo yeah. on their back or on their uh, you know, shoulder on in their arm. And I just question to myself, what do you know about Om? <laughs> yeah. Do you know anything about Om? I have met people, uh, you know, saying, uh, you know, India is so old. It's so, it's the ancient civilization. It's the oldest of all. And then I, uh, you know, I try to ask, uh, you know, I, I, I don't be silent. So I ask, uh, what, what makes you think that? Mm. Uh, like uh, Hinduism is the oldest. No clue. Is the Google research Wikipedia? <laughs> yeah, you don't study Wikipedia. You don't go to Wikipedia. You yeah. quote scriptures. Yeah, you quote. Okay, here is the, the ancient papyrus. Source, primary sources. Yeah. Yes, the primary sources. The papyrus. You no, know, like we have for the uh, Book of John, I believe. You know, uh, yeah. P fifty two. You know, right. you quote. Okay, this is in this library. You go and check. And I, yeah. you don't quote Wikipedia <laughs> <laughs> or what dot com says. You oh, know? for like, sure, yeah. for sure. Um, Andrew, so, do you want? To, uh, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, so thinking in terms of man, like anthropology, uh, who who is God and who is man? Like, how do we define those terms within Hinduism? Because I know there's the plurality of gods, but what about the one above all of that? Is that even, how do you define that God? And then what is man and what is the purpose of man within Hinduism? Yeah, uh, so so there is obviously a difference. Uh in Hinduism between God and um, the human beings. But uh, if you go to the earliest sources uh, in Hinduism, the Vedas, basically you get to see uh, that the self, the Atman, that the soul <coughs> is basically, uh, so there is a cosmic, there is a supreme God above everyone. All right, that's called the Brahman. Uh, you get to see Brahman in Chandogya Upanishad <coughs> book one. If anyone opens up, you get to see Om, the pra, the is the oldest is the sound of the god. You know, when people do yoga, they say Om. They chant this mantra. You know, uh, uh, any any mantra, the beginning is always Om. And again, in, in all the Vedas, we don't get to see Om. 
in the earliest mantras we, there is no mention of om om mm. was later so hinduism developed over time mm. over time you know all, all the gods who are mentioned in vedas the rigveda they are not worshiped indra there is no temple in india for yeah. indra no temple like maybe there is a one and sub corner but indra mm. there is no temple shiva this temple yeah. uh, so anyway um, um so uh so the whole concept of vedanta philosophy the vedic i am talking about the earliest uh, philosophy Uh, from the hindu text the vedas um over there you believe that when you meditate uh you are getting connected with uh something a cosmic god called brahman and that brahman is, is the supreme of all that's the ultimate reality uh, that's what the buddha achieved that what a uh, lot of hindu um, gods and goddesses uh, achieved to get rid of the death cycle the samsara cycle yeah, the reincarnation cycle uh, we see in hatha yoga pradapika uh, right in the beginning first book uh, yeah, from the first verse to uh, you know the first book over there first to fifth verses uh, over there it says that even shiva did yoga because he wanted to defeat death uh, so the whole concept is you do meditation and then your atman becomes uh, equal or uh, gets aligned with the with the brahman the cosmic god and that is no other than yourself yeah so that's the uh, the whole end actually uh, mm. all the gurus they believe you know they they're burning their karmas actually mm. uh, by doing meditation yoga dhyan it's called you know uh, dhyan is like you, you meditate in in sanskrit is called dhyan in english is meditation so you dhyan you, you know and until the time you you feel like you have achieved mm-hmm. moksha yeah yeah and so just in cliff so that's a cliff note summary of the other vedas and this would be good just for people kind of get a foundation this is the really the primary book of authority that all sects uh, and castes of hinduism would adhere to um now then then what's the what's one's next line the next quickly, i would say the bhagavad gita yeah so obviously openheimer uh quotes that in that quote that we opened up at the episode but um talk about that it's a book with a lot of war and violence what's a, what's a brief the, summary the, of it the the brief story if anyone reads bhagavad gita uh this book is full of war mahabharata is basically it's a part of mahabharata the book 6 is the bhagavad gita there are 18 books in mahabharata and among the 18 books the uh, 6th one is the bhagavad gita uh, which is seen as a little book you know but it's a part of mahabharata so it's a it's basically in brief it's a war uh to win over a kingdom called hastinapur you know who will win over this kingdom who will become the next king so the cousins and the brothers are fighting within each other you know they are all relatives you know they know each other Kond- uh, kauravas and the pandavas you know five brothers and the 100 brothers they fight and krishna is actually leading the war you know arjuna was from the pandava side and krishna is just trying to tell arjuna you have to fight you that's your dharma that's your duty uh, that that is what you should do whoever doesn't do that uh, should should be judged you know actually and like i i quoted before uh, bhagavata puran book 6 uh, chapter 10 if anyone opens uh, over there it's written at the end that uh, the the most noble way to die is you die in a battlefield or you chant the vedas while you are dying you know so uh, arjuna is not ready to fight because it's a bloodshed you know yeah. it's a war it's not a good thing actually no war has ever been good throughout the history it's a bloodshed people die people lose families you know and arjuna is uh, on this uh, what do you call chariot uh, and and he's looking at this uh, you know this whole crowd and uh, there's so many animals even who will die you know back in those days uh, people used to fight with animals even you know mm-hmm. uh, so a lot of uh, animal you know people who love animals you know uh, they should also know this that the bhagavad gita doesn't support <laughs> uh-huh. uh, the rights of animal because they fought with mm-hmm. animals so uh, arjuna is not ready to fight he's ready to forgive he, he just doesn't want to fight and then um, you get to see uh, krishna i think in uh, i believe in book 2 uh, if anyone is the book to krishna is just trying to convince again and mm-hmm. again to arjuna that you should fight and yeah. I, yes the war happened the kauravas uh, lost mm-hmm. the war many were dead but still they ended up in heaven yeah. 
Wow. Even and, though Krishna was on the other side. Yeah, so fascinating. I know there's a lot more you could do on that. And just to name the, what are the other two, other couple of books that are just sort of uh, looked to? After Vedas, uh, sorry, after the Vedas and then the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, next, I would say the Puranas. Uh, or I'll say the Ramayana. You know, mm. this is still a, you know, um, um, like uh, fight between Rama, uh, Ramayana. I, I would say the Ramayana is a story of Rama, you know, because the Hare okay. Krishna, you get Rama. Um, the whole thing. So it's more of a story, not necessarily like a guy, a step-by-step guide for ritual. Uh, uh, it, it's not like uh, after Vedas you have to go there. You know, uh, Hare Krishnas they don't follow by the way Vedas. Okay, mm. uh, they don't follow the Puranas. I mean, they can, they will obviously accept that Vedas is a sacred scripture. But if you go to Hare Krishna temple, they would say, have this Gita, buy our Gita, and the, buy the Bhagavata Puran. So every Actually, every sect in Hinduism, not the caste, the the followers for Krishna, they have different books. For Shiva, they have Shiv Puran. So after Gita, I would say the Ramayana, which is the life story of uh, Hindu god Rama. You know how he uh, uh, like uh, how he goes to the forest and uh, he is with his wife and his brother Lakshman, uh, and then uh, someone kidna- kidnaps his uh, wife Sita. And Sita, you know, is kidnapped by the king called Ravana. But anyway, Sita later on gets uh, free and she comes back to uh, her husband Rama. But Rama is not ready to accept Sita. And no one is understanding why Rama is behaving like this. And Sita is seen as also a goddess kind of in for Hindus, you know. Uh, every Hindu woman, they try to be like Sita because she, was, she is believed to be the purest, and someone who can do no no mistake, like a holiest. But Rama doubts that Sita slept with the king, Ravana. And Sita is crying, uh, you know, yeah. crying and crying. Uh, like, Sita is like, you are my husband, you are doubting me. Uh, and Rama says, get out from my sight, you know, don't stay near me, go with other men, go with the monkeys or the other animals, don't stay near me. Mm-hmm. So you get to see, you, and Sita is pregnant, and and Ra- Rama actually says, you have to do, you know what? If you have to prove your chastity, you have to go through this fire. It's called Agni Pariksha. Uh, Hindus will understand what I'm trying to say. Agni Pariksha is like you, uh, Rama asks Sita that you walk over this fire, and if the fire doesn't consume you, it proves that you were, uh, I mean, you, nothing happened between you and Ravana, the king who yeah. kidnapped her. And Sita was pregnant at that time. Uh, we get to see that uh, in Ramayana. Uh, so you, these are the stories, you know. Mm. And after Ramayana, Puranas, the okay. eighteen major, eighteen minor. For Shiva's life, if anyone has to study, which scripture should I go to for Shiva's life? Who is this destroyer? You know, is mm-hmm. re- Shiva really the you know the, known as the destroyer? You go to Shiv Puran. Right in the Shiv Puran, you get to see it's mentioned uh, that Shiva is we uh, will come as a destroyer. Mm. Uh, yeah. No, that that's no. I appreciate that. And then, so uh, just jumping over to that's a brief summary of just the uh, Hindu scriptures. Um, now we're looking at the hierarchy of sort of like the Hindu gods, and so we're at obviously we're at the. Hey, Jerry. Yeah. Can I ask a question real quick in yeah. terms of Hindu scriptures? So, uh, Sandeep, I have a question: Is the canon of Hindu scriptures closed, or is it a continuing canon? Meaning that is there still the ability for more scriptures to be created? And if not, why not? Uh, that, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I would say Hinduism is still developing today. My grandmother, uh, you know, we are Brahmin, so my, my grandmother is still a staunch Brahmin. She uh, follows a female deity known as Ma. You know, the female deities are always, you know, all the Westerners, when they go to India, they say female deity as Ma. You know, uh, so Ma Santosi Mata. You know, Santosi, if anyone searches, Santosi is a very prominent female deity in India today. And my grandmother, you know, is a huge devotee uh, of this female deity. And there are millions, literally millions of followers. There are temples, you know, for this yeah. goddess. And this goddess, were, there was no evidence, no reference. I, I mean it, what I'm saying. I, there was no reference before, I will say, 1950s during that time. Like, uh, before that, before 1950, there was no mention. No one knew about Santosi. Uh, it's a new god within 70 years. Like, like 
you know, within this 60, 70 years, this new God pops up. So now today, you know, she has like millions, you know. So whatever, uh, so I, yes. Uh, and obviously there are guidebooks for again, Santosi, you know, there are books, there are scriptures, which my uh, grandmother, she chants before yeah. when, when she worships, uh, before going to bed. So uh, yeah, it's, it's developing even to this very day. What's up, everybody? If you are blessed by this content and you want to support the gospel's proclamation to the cults while equipping the church to combat deception, then come join us and become a cultish all-access member. You will get an ad-free experience and exclusive content like Cultish the Water Cooler, where you hang out with Jeremiah and myself as we go live and interact with all of our members. You'll also get early release of episodes one to two weeks early. On top of all of that, there's also Cultish the Aftermath. It's an after show commentary where we get to say all of the things that they won't let us. On top of that, you get all of the other training on apologiastudios.com. Come be one of us. Head over to thecultishshow.com or follow the link in the show notes and click the join button. Directly support the work of this ministry as the mission is completely funded by you, our listener. No, I mean, it's, it's always interesting and it makes sense where anybody can come, anybody can become the God or the guru. It makes sense how you can have a lot of uh, changes going on. Any, any new God can pop up at any time. Very fascinating. Um, and so another question then I would have would the uh, defining terms would be uh, the Hindu gods. Uh, just real quickly, uh, we were at the Hindu temple the other day and we saw a plethora of gods there. Who, who's the head honcho? Uh, right now, who's the king of the mountain when it comes to the god, uh, the gods of the New Age, specifically the gods of Hinduism? Uh, I would say Shiva, mostly. Uh, yeah, I have literally seen, uh, like I have personally seen people having tattoo here of Shiva. Uh, and then the next one, if you ask me, I'll say Krishna. Uh, Shiva, Krishna uh, are the uh, superior of all these two people and, and it, if it comes to feminine deity then it's the Shakti you know Shiva Shakti uh, it is said uh, who is related to the Kundalini actually it's the Shakti is a feminine energy which one raises from the Muladhara to the uh, Sahasarara Chakra mm -hmm. uh, and then over there the Shiva and Shakti meets okay. together all right, All so, from Kundalini Yoga, yoga Kundalini Upanishad, and then the ritual connect. Yeah, let's let's interconnect like the, the different New Age practices in comparison to the Hindu gods. So usually the Kundalini Yoga is is directly a byproduct of Shiva. Those two things yep. are interconnected. Yep, uh, and um, people say I do Kundalini, but I don't. Uh, I don't want to follow Hinduism. I would put Jesus over there. It's not possible. You can't re-edit the scriptures. Uh, it's just yeah. not possible. You, I can't re-edit the Bible. Uh, it's Jesus there. It's already written. Like yeah. the People who wrote it knew what they're writing. You can't take out the Shiva and the Shakti. These two words are mentioned in the Yoga Kundalini Upanishad. The only, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the oldest of all scripture which talks about Kundalini yeah. practice. So you can't take these things out. You have mm. to believe these things, yeah. and I believe a lot of a lot of uh, people who practices this, even though they know that uh, they're not doing it right, but they know that Hinduism is so much into this. Yeah, I mean, there's no Kundalini without Hinduism. Mm. Simple. And who comes after Shiva? Um, so Sh Krishna. Krishna. I would say. Yeah. Define Krishna and the ritual. What's connected as far as like uh, out? pourings, rituals, beliefs that a lot of people would identify with as far as New Age practices go? Um, um, Krishna is seen as a uh, god of yoga also. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, which is the second most uh, sacred book for all Hindus, uh, believed to be, a lot of Hindus believe Bhagavad Gita uh, is the national book of India. Uh, there are uh, Bhakti Yoga, there is uh, Kyan Yoga, uh, uh, all of this yoga, you know, there is karma yoga. These are the terms mentioned in the in the uh, Hindu scripture. So people who do yoga, uh, they are called to do bhakti yoga. You know, uh, bhakti yoga is like a devotion. It's like a meditation, which is uh, you're thinking about Krishna. And Krishna tells in the Bhagavad Gita uh, that you have to uh, you have to think about me. You have to uh, meditate on me you know uh, that's called the uh, uh, the bhakti yoga you are devoted to Krishna and so again uh, uh, who is this Krishna to learn about his life the most two important books when it comes to Krishna is the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 
uh, you go to any Hare Krishna temple, they will hand out the Srimad Bhagavatam. That's the most uh, besides the Bhagavad Gita. And these two books, you get to see Shiva's entire life. Mostly comes out from the Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm. Uh, uh, we get to see also in Matsa Puran, Shiva is literally cursing six, uh, like 16,000 women. You know, uh, We get to see a story, Shiva is cursing um, women to get raped even. Uh, he's not happy, you know, he, so the woman should get raped, you know. There are verses literally in Matsa Puran which uh, says, and then Bhagavat, Bhagavata Puran is all about um, Krishna, how, you know, how, how how he was like human beings, you know, he did mistakes like humans, you know. So it's nothing like super yeah. uh, holy God like Jesus, you know, sinless Mm -hmm. There's no nothing like that for Krishna's yeah. life. And then we're talking about just practices and beliefs would be a lot of the ideas of reincarnation because when we were at the Hindu temple, that was brought out specifically in relation to Krishna. Yeah, yeah. The uh, reincarnation is uh, is is the core belief of Hinduism. You mm -hmm. have to believe that that uh, karma is something which you have to pay. Uh, you, no one gets rid of the karmic cycle, mm -hmm. uh, the samsara cycle. No one gets free of that. Even the gods are, uh, you know, many Hindus will say, no, 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 by doing yoga, you know. And some, there are some verses which mm. actually says that uh, by doing yoga uh, and meditation, you can get freedom from the karmic cycle. You know, Buddha did that. Gautama Buddha, you know, he, he did, he meditated all, all of his uh, end of his life and, and thinking that he attained a moksha, uh, freedom from the karmic cycle. Yeah. Uh, so... I, you you don't get to see that's actually happening in in Devi Bhagavata Puran like over there it literally mentions in book six um, chapter ten that uh, even the gods like the Shiva Vishnu Brahma all are under the karmic judgment they mm. don't get they, they are not free that's why Krishna was killed by a you know how did Krishna die he died uh, by uh, by a uh, by an arrow. You know, shot by a, a hunter called Zara. Mm. You know, so because Krishna did, Krishna in his previous life was Rama. So Rama killed uh, Vali. You know, uh, he, so Rama became next birth Krishna, and Krishna was killed by that Vali who became in next birth Zara. Wow! <laughs> so it's the uh, karmic cycle. Quick, quick question, going back to uh, the gods here, and I think it can even relate this to some samsara. But let's say Brahman. Not yeah. Brahma, uh, but Brahman uh, is different than Krishna, Vishnu, and uh, Shiva, right? My my question is is what what's the difference, and if there's something that is submitted to by Vishnu, Shiva, uh, and Krishna, like Samsara, did Brahman create Samsara? Or, or is samsara this inter eternal principle that uh, that all things must submit to except for Brahman? Uh, I'm just kind of confused on the way all of that works. It's it's actually a little confusing. Actually, <laughs> the Hindu scripture says uh, uh, not the same thing. You know, uh, different scripture says different things. Actually, if you read the Puranas, the Puranas, you know, different Puranas are claiming <clears throat> that Shiva is the is the is the main guy and then the bhagavad gita is saying the krishna is the main guy but so brahman and brahma both are different uh, yeah. so uh, brahma is the creator god is like a god like shiva vishnu but brahman in with the end at the end uh, brahman is is like a cosmic god uh, is like the ultimate reality who is above the in, in, in the sky you know, and the whole universe is is within the Brahman. You know, uh, so there is this uh, formless, you know, uh, kind of uh, God who is known as Brahman. The whole cosmos uh, is is inside this Brahman, and the sound of Brahman is the Om. This is the sound. Uh, but again, uh, different scriptures like the uh, Chandogya Upanishad. From mm -hmm. the Vedas, book one, if anyone reads over there, it's, it says actually the Om, the sound Om mm. is the God. So the, even the sound can be God, you know. Yeah. And then there is a, a Bhagavad Gita even claiming that Shiva, uh, Krishna is the Shiva. 
he's the creator. So right. different book is saying different things. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so Brahman would be like the third in line as far as the hierarchy of the Hindu gods? Yeah, so Brahman is the top, I would say. The the topmost is the Brahman. Brahman? S yeah, Brahman uh, uh, is the ultimate reality. You know, you, you attain moksha, you achieve, you go to the state of Brahman. Mm. The next one would be uh, Shiva. So it's Brahman, Shiva, then, uh, uh, then Krishna. Krishna. Yes, uh, and then there are you know others, uh, uh, Rama. There is. Uh, what about uh, Vishnu? Because Oppenheimer, at the very beginning, he quotes yeah. Vishnu. Yeah. So Vishnu is also, but when it comes to hierarchy, I'll say Brahman, and then Shiva, Krishna, Vishnu. Uh, this this is kind of the hierarchy. Mm. Uh, now it again, uh, many Hindus uh, might have different hierarchies because right. there's nothing like one saying. Mm. You know, like the Bible says, Jesus is the yeah. is will be the sacrifice. Yeah, and obviously we we've, we've recorded a lot of content. I don't think we have the time to uh, go through all thirty three thousand plus deities, or however <laughs> many are in Hinduism, or how it, how many are in total? Uh, thirty three million. Thirty three million. Why did I say thirty three thousand? It's been a long day, <laughs> but it's a lot. So needs to say we we're not going to have the time to go through every single uh, Hindu god. Otherwise, we would be here till. Uh, <laughs> A long, the rest long, of our lives. Oh, the rest of our lives. A yeah. long, long time. So that just uh, made my heart skip a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that that being said, uh, so we're talking. Those are kind of regardless of what uh, sect or caste of Hinduism, and and as many whatever other gods you believe in, those four that you're mentioning, that that's kind of the hierarchy there. So we have the certain we have the Hindu scriptures covered, some of the basic gods of the New Age, and in that you have the Kundalini Yoga, transcendental meditation, and, and all those things that are part and partial that comes out. Uh, from the worldview of Hinduism. And then another thing that's talked about that maybe people want to come back and listen to this in reference to your testimony, um, describe the different castes. There's the caste system. Describe each caste and what they represent. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, according to the Bhagavad Gita, again, um, the Brahman, the, the Brahmin caste, actually, the Brahmin caste should be a uh, priest. Their duty is to be priest, to read the Vedas. Uh, we we get to uh, see that in the uh, Ramayana, you know, Krishna, uh, sorry, Rama uh, killing Sambuka, who was from the sh uh, lower caste trying to do a ritual, and, and sh uh, Rama killed Sambuka because, you know, Shudra should not do that. It's not the job for Shudra. So, Brahmin is to read the uh, Vedas, uh, you know, do the rituals, lead the congregation. The next is the Kshatriya. Kshatriya's duty is to uh, uh, establish truth, uh, uh, follow the dharma, you know, uh, follow the, um, uh, you know, defend the religion, defend the faith. Actually, go to the battlefield, fight. That's what Arjuna did. You know, who was convinced, like forced by Krishna. I always see in that way. Um, and then are the Vashas. The Vashas are the sect for of Vishnu actually. Uh, so their job is to do trading, to do business. You know, most of the business uh, people in India belong from the Vaishnavas caste. Yeah, uh, Vaishnavas also they are called. And the last is the Shudras, who are uh, meant to clean the uh, latrine. You know, uh, clean, do all the lower jobs, uh, burn the body, throw the ashes, all the cleaning jobs, lower mm -hmm. job, not yeah. done by Brahmins. We have the lowest one. That's the called the chandalas. They are the low, low more lower than the shudras. Mm. So they are like also known as untouchables actually. So in India they are untouchable caste also, mostly found in the southern part, uh, village areas and all. Um, yeah. So these are the duties actually, and their duty is to do all the lower jobs. You know, mm. and no Brahmin would would ever clean a latrine. <laughs> mm. Never in the history it has happened, and never it will happen. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you got the, so those are all the caste systems you have then. Um, when it comes to defining terms like within Hinduism, we've covered the Hindu scriptures, uh, the Hindu gods in this episode. These are the caste systems. Is there anything that would be notable um, in our audience? I mean, by the time they'll probably, if they listen to all the episodes, I'm still, I'm still, you know, they're probably going to have questions or want to kind of understand things. And given this is your life, are there any kind of points we should cover as far as just understanding that kind of lens and worldview of Hinduism that we should be aware of as far as defining terms. Yeah, uh, uh, one last thing that I would like to say is that uh, uh, if if you are young, uh, you know, uh, you're from the West or you know, you middle middle aged or someone like that, 
uh, you go to your workplace or you go to universities or you know you're you're somewhere school or somewhere if someone is trying to tell you that uh, you know Christianity is a new religion and and that Hinduism is the oldest and it's the best of all and let's do yoga you know uh, you can do yoga without Hinduism you know or without like uh, doing the tot to expose you know do the kurumasana but not believing in the hindu god vishnu uh, uh, that's not possible you can't reedit the scriptures uh, that's my point you can't reedit uh, all of these scriptures yoga sutras of patanjali or the hat yoga uh, these are main scriptures you can't take the adinath the word out from that scripture these are like uh, the center the bedrock for for these all practices you know uh, so never never believe that uh, that hinduism you know is the oldest uh, look for the evidence uh, maybe if it is the oldest you'd find some kind of evidence like manuscript or uh, some kind of inscription you know look for mm. the evidence uh, just don't believe because you are being told by so 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 professor or you know lecturer like openheimer even you know uh, many people in the west might think okay you know openheimer got uh, inspired by the bhagavad gita and vishnu there's no vishnu like i have told you there's no vishnu in bhagavad gita he quotes bhagavad gita we open we don't find vishnu so openheimer maybe he he know physics and and that's uh, not bad i mean the, uh, he, he knew something and uh, but he doesn't for sure know anything about bhagavad gita that's my point mm-hmm. i'm not trying to brag or something but uh, you have to study the scriptures to yeah. uh, know about hinduism so just don't believe because your professor tells you that or your uh and told you that or your friend <laughs> told you that you know yeah no go to the source and that's why we had you come out from new jersey to be on the podcast <laughs> so uh, i'm really looking forward to seeing the ripple effect that that these uh conversations have um so yeah i appreciate you coming out here i mean i've been talking all day i've been like i've been using that like this honey spray to kind of like in my throat and now my throat is starting to get raspy so now i'm starting to sound like eh starts like dr fauci or something i can't wait to have my indian food <laughs> <laughs> one thing that i cannot get rid of indian food yeah, yes indian you know, food is good curry Every, and all of this the curry yeah. that, that stuff is good for sure <laughs> but you do like your hamburgers too oh, so you got yeah i just i like beef no that's the type of syn- <laughs> that's the type of syncretism we can do we can do with some hamburgers fries yeah. a good a good you're uh, safe you're here yeah. you're saying that <laughs> a good pastrami sandwich <laughs> but then also, you know, Indian foods are also good. A little curry is good too. Right. Um, all right. Well, if you guys have enjoyed uh, this episode, this series, I hope this uh, episode. You might have to come back to this again. Uh, we'll time. We'll try and timestamp this, and hopefully, this will be helpful. And, and you know, anytime you have questions about Hinduism, and who knows, maybe sometime down the future, we could do another collaboration. I think this is going to be very, very eye-opening for our audience. So, man, I appreciate you coming on, and this has been a blast. Thank you for having me. We appreciate that. Absolutely. All right. Well, if you guys enjoyed this program, I uh, appreciate it. Definitely check out our other content. The links in the description. And we will talk to you all next time on Cultish. Talk to you all soon. What's up, everybody? It's the Super Sleuth here, letting you know that you can go to shopcultish.com and get all of our exclusive Cultish merch. There's the Bad Theology Hurts People shirt. Jerry wears it all the time. I wear it all the time. Sometimes we wear it at the same time without even trying to have that happen on the show. And we're just like, whoa, you're wearing the shirt. I'm wearing the shirt. You could wear the shirt too. Go to shopcultish.com today and get your exclusive cultish merch. Talk to you later, guys.